Britain is brimming with hoarders. In these boxes? I have no idea. <laughs> Drowning under clutter. Oh. But we've heard their SOS. I do, I need a lot of help. <laughs> Antiques expert Curtis Dowling will find treasure to sell. They're selling for hundreds, if not thousands of pounds. Excellent. Make me an offer. While decluttering duo Joanna Riley and Marianne Kamak will kickstart the clearouts. Anything would be a little better than what we have here. I think I'm going to have to be quite firm. But it won't be easy. I am petrified. To help our hoarders part with their possessions. Just be gentle with it. And reclaim their homes for good. Oh, no, I want to keep that one. I don't want to end up naked. Today, they're helping clear a home that's so full of toys and memorabilia, there's no room for the owners. We can just about get two placemats to sit down for a meal, so there are no romantic dinners for us. And a clutter-filled garage that's now spilling over into the conservatory. Gets to the stage where I can't move around in it. Some expert help is needed to clear this hoard. You'll find them at boot fairs up and down the country. <laughs> Yeah. Just keep packing, just keep packing. Later, our SOS team will head to Sutton Coalfield to help musician Pat clear his clutter. But first, in nearby Birmingham, welcome to the wonderful, magical world of 57-year-old chemistry teacher Tony and his fiance, radiologist Anne. Most people say it's well and truly cluttered, as my beloved better half here thinks this is well and truly cluttered. I do, and the garage doesn't bear thinking about. I know, there's a lot. <laughs> Understatement. And there's Tony's study. There's a tiny space that Tony uses for uh, cleaning coins. There's a route to the desk and there's a route out of the desk, but everything else is near enough floor to ceiling. He tells me he knows where stuff is. I'm not entirely sure. Tony and Anne have some big events coming up. <laughs> Get married next year. After that, we will probably move down south. This means that this house will be sold. And that means all this has to go. Time to bring in our two experts. Curtis is an art and antiques valuer with 25 years' experience who's here to help Tony and Anne find things to sell. Hello, Hi. Tony. I'm Curtis. Hi, I'm Joanna. Nice to meet you both. While Joanna runs her own cleaning business and will help them decide what to keep and clear out. Take us to the worst room. Well, no problem there, I tell you. Look at this lot. Wow. This lot. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That is a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Where'd you start in a place like this? Good question. I mean, there's a lot around us here. Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, Disney honor over the back. A lot of Disney. It's the same story in the living room. He loves Lord of the Rings. The kitchen. I mean. And that study. So how much Disney stuff is there? I have no clue. That I mean, much? There's, there's that much. Seriously, there's a lot. When there's so much stuff like this, it kind of makes sense to me that it all goes into one lot at auction, as opposed to separates. And I'll tell you why. Selling them individually, I don't know whether we have enough time left in no. our lives to be able to do it. I can understand that. I think um, for the valuable items such as, for example, the classic pieces, yep. They might go as a lot. Tony's right. There's a big market for vintage figures because so few of them survive. The oldest and most rare can fetch thousands of pounds. On the other hand, the generic sort of can be one. theme park, stroke, store china, whatever, they could be one lot. OK, well, I think between us we've agreed a plan that makes us both happy. Yes, I think so too. Right. Tony's been trolling the internet to make sure that the price he wants for it is going to be close to the price he gets. Just hope we can get that price for him, really. Upstairs, Joanna's discovering a slightly different collection, ancient-looking electrical gadgets. Come this way, Joanna. This is Tony's study. Study? Yeah, there's not much studying going on in here. It's a bit like a surveillance room with his telly and his 
console. Oh, yeah. these are consoles. These wow. are all consoles. My thoughts when I first entered Tony's house was the sheer amount of stuff. There were so many boxes. Yep, you'll be busy. Downstairs, Tony's dug out something really special for Curtis, original animation artwork that he's willing to sell. There is um, a film cell there from Aristocats. Ooh, one of my favourites. Well, there you go. But not the cats, it's of the French madam that's yeah. kind of, you know, getting a present along. And then there's some pencil work from The Black Cauldron, not one of the best films they produce, but it is a genuine Disney film. And genuine artwork, too. These paintings and drawings would eventually have been photographed to create each individual frame of these classic films. And, I mean, the thing is, is that, to me, these are passed on to someone who appreciates them for what they Well, you are. never own them, do you? You're just no, a keeper. Absolutely. They're one-offs. Yeah. I mean, and they are art. In the study, Joanna and Anne are chucking out anything that's not worth much. Who okay. needs three keyboards? Apparently Tony. You can, you can never have too many computer pieces, it seems. Lots of wires everywhere. Earphones. I don't even know what they are. <laughs> What's what in this here? In there? Is it a pencil case? Oh, I don't no. know. This looks like a soldering kit. They're just bags in bags. It's looking better already. While Joanna and Anne soldier on... Nice workable space we're making here, yeah. Anne. Downstairs, Curtis has spotted some limited edition figures that could produce good cash for Tony. My nightmare for Christmas collection. I love the film and I actually acquired quite a few pieces. Some of which are quite rare. The harder a collectible toy is to find, the more value it has. Will you keep one of them or will you... Or are you going to say, right, that's it, I'm getting rid of the lot? No, I think one must make a, a clean start. If we can get 20 to £50 pounds per one, that's no, no, not a bad day's work. Too right. After assessing Tony's hoard, Curtis has come up with a plan. Sell some of the valuable vintage pieces as individual items or in collections, while the rest go as a job lot. It all goes into one lot at auction. Seeing 400 pieces of Disney, it's visually very attractive. And now he's ready to skedaddle off to sell it. Do you think that they're going to raise enough money for their wedding? I think there's money in there. You know, I think just by the sheer quantity, Anne said a good thing. She said if everything's sold for a fiver, it's still a couple of grand, isn't it? Because there's so much of it. You know, if it's £2,000, be grateful. Yes. If it's five and I've been over-conservative, yes. then everyone's a winner. So while Joanna stays behind to help Tony decide what to keep and clear out, Curtis has brought Tony's film cells to a specialist in vintage gear at a large antique centre. Meet Steve. There he is. Hello, Steve. Got something to show you. Film cells from oh, Disney right. films. Oh, nice. They're funky, aren't they? Yeah. That's what I sort of go for. Quirky and different. So, can Curtis get what Tony's hoping for? That's £160, by the way. He wants £80 each for them. I was thinking 80 for both. We're a long way off there. Yeah. I'd have to frame them, obviously, so I've, yeah, got, that, that I've got that to counter into it. 50? Yeah, let's say 50 each, 100 quid. I think I've got what I think is the right price for it. Yeah, marvellous. Cash money. Check. <laughs> cash, is there anything other than cash? Yeah. <laughs> so there you go, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Super. That's it then. Very nice. It's £60 pounds less than Tony was hoping for, but still a good wad, and there's plenty more stuff still to sell. Tony and Anne weren't the only ones to send out a hoarder SOS to our experts. Meet Pat. He's a keen musician living in Sutton Coalfield. In this rather lovely house. But you can't judge a book by its cover. First, his garage filled up. We moved into this house nine years ago and I've never parked any car in either garage. That flowed into his conservatory? Baby equipment, prams, 
Electrical gear obsolete. Computers, sports equipment. And oh no, look at his music room, home to 17 guitars, no less. I use three very regularly. Pat's wife has had enough. So Pat's agreed to sell what he can and get rid of the rest, with a helping hand from Curtis. This isn't a garage, it's a recycling centre. Much of Pat's clutter is the legacy of past businesses. We used to have a baby equipment business, and I know there's quite a lot of leftover stock. It's not recommended to sell on second-hand car seats for safety reasons, so they are worthless. And the rest doesn't look too promising. Probably got a spare set of golf clubs, I've got some tennis rackets, I've got some badminton rackets, I've got some old computers. Time for a closer look. Where do we start? Some of it needs to go, some of it I probably want to keep. What do you want to keep? Let's well, I want to keep this, because it's got kind of sentimental value. Go on, tell me. Well, I started playing American football when I was 44, and the, the, the team I was playing for bought me this for my 60th birthday. You want to keep that? I'd keep, yeah, I want to keep that. OK, yeah, that yeah. makes perfect sense. You want a row? Yikes! So nothing to sell so far until Curtis spots some artwork. Now, this one I think might be a kind of original. It's not terrible, and I think you could probably pop that into an auction. Probably someone's going to give you 20, 30 quid for it. And there's something else gleaming in the corner of the conservatory. You go back 60, 70 years, that was probably the height of poshness. But now? You'll find them at boot fairs up and down the country for a fiver. Really? Because nobody uses a decanter. On a great day, £20 each. So, so £100. Yeah, we didn't buy any of it. Oh, so... We either won it or inherited it. So if you've got a quid for it, you're in profit, <laughs> to be absolutely <laughs> honest. What's not to like? And Curtis is confident there's even more money to be made. Favourite, really, is this one. This is an 80s... Eric Clapton. and Strat. And still to come, Joanna plays hardball with Tony. If you're that attached, why isn't he on your mantelpiece? Oh, I see. This is the thing. In Birmingham, fiancés Tony and Anne are planning a big wedding, so Queen of Clean Joanna has stepped in to help them declutter. Lots of wires everywhere. I don't even know what they are. And in Sutton Coalfield, antiques connoisseur Curtis is with musician Pat digging out items to sell. You could probably pop that into an auction. Someone's going to give you 20, 30 quid for it. After checking out the conservatory, next stop, the music room. This is a cluttered room. It my is, friend. yeah. Well, that's why I'm hoping you guys can help me out because I well, can't really work in here, can I? Yep, see what you mean. Curtis has his beady eye on those guitars, but Pat has something else in mind. Old computer gear. What you got? I've got an Atari ST520. Look at that. Now, this is very old. Very portable, very lightweight oh, laptop. God, don't get a hernia picking this up. Right, yeah. All going, yeah? Oh, yeah, definitely. Have you got any idea or expectation about money on these? No, none at all. I don't expect to get much at all, if anything. Your average computer historian mm -hmm. may very well part with a few quid for it. OK. And it's not just historians. Nostalgic computer enthusiasts pay good money for the vintage gear they owned in their youth. The Olivetti laptop is fascinating enough to carry a little bit of money. The Spectrum, just pure history, will make us a few pounds. OK. Yeah. But it's better than throwing them away. Yeah. In Birmingham, Joanna's tasked with helping Tony decide whether to keep or clear the less valuable toys and games. So, Tony, let's have a chat about how we're going to get all your stuff sorted out. OK, then, blimey, good luck to you. Because there is a lot of stuff that needs to be got rid of okay. one way or the other. Well, best to make a start somewhere. What's that, do you want to grab me? Rings. Let me have a look. I'm kind of attached to that to some degree. But if you're that attached, why isn't he on your mantelpiece? Or yeah, no. why isn't he in your bedroom? Oh, I see, this is the thing, is that I've, I've really got to get rid of pretty well most of it. I can't, I can't afford, not monetary-wise, not the issue, it's yeah. the space. And you've got your wedding to save for. Well, that's true enough. Well, we've got to go. And I'm saying that with a bit of reluctance, to be fair. Letting go of everything is hard for Tony. 
as there's more to this story than meets the eye. Tony didn't accumulate this huge hoard alone. Before meeting his fiancée Anne, he was married for 30 years to his wife Jackie, and it was they and their two daughters who built up this huge collection. Then three years ago, Jackie passed away. Then, of course, you start to reflect on the on, on, on situation in terms of how you find yourself. If you have lost someone that you've lived with for a very long time, everything's a reminder, a constant reminder. They're no longer there. So you think to yourself, there is a time to start letting things go. And that's what I reached before I even met Anne, that I wanted to start moving on in my life. Tony met Anne six months ago who fell in love with him, but not his collectibles. And now they are planning to get married next year. Coming in, it was first overwhelming, the amount of Disneyana, which is here, until the collections and, you know, the, the clutter and the things have been moved on. We can't move on. And now Joanna's here to help them. Normally, she'd be looking for stuff to chuck out, recycle, or send to charity. But in this case, she and Tony are boxing everything up for the job lot auction Curtis is planning. Let's go grab some boxes. OK, let's go. There's one for you, Oh, OK. Sir. Start putting the Lord of the Rings figures in, I think. OK, yeah. Yeah. Does it pain you to do that, or are you happy now? No, no, they've got to go, they've got to go. That's the spirit. What's he say? Throw it in the foyer. Throw him in the box. <laughs> Tony's starting to get the hang of this. Do you want to do the writing okay. on this? Oh, very well. So now Joanna thinks he's ready to go it alone with a clear plan to box everything by theme for auction. We will get you sorted in no time. Good. In Sutton Coalfield, Curtis still has his hands full in Pat's music room. My guitar collection got a bit out of hand. So you're getting rid of a few? I'm getting rid of all of the ones you can see here. Pat wants to sell five of his guitars. So you bought these new? I bought that new, okay. yeah. OK. Yeah. Would you pay for it? 800 quid. My favourite, really, is this one. This is an 80s Eric Clapton. Clapton Strat. In the right hands, sounds amazing. Yeah, in the right hands. What did you pay for it? 1,000 quid. I bought this because it's not been an investment. Limited edition, wow. you know, mm. good, but they've not, they've not appreciated no. uh, anywhere near. Right, let's talk about expectations. Well, I've run at least nine. He's talking hundred, folks. Yeah, I think you're there or thereabouts. Yeah. Eric? At least a grand, maybe 1,100. Now, yeah. this is the difficult one because it's handmade, because it's difficult to put a price on, isn't it? Right, so let's have a quick add up. Coming on a grand. Yep. Coming on a grand. Yep. 500 you're putting a reserve on yep. because it's handmade. Let's say pushing three grand. Yeah. I admire your calm confidence, the pair of you. Pat's a musician. He knows his instruments and he's got guitars to sell. There's certainly going to be no wool pulling over his eyes. If I don't get top dollar for those guitars, I'm going to be in trouble. Hmm, fingers firmly crossed then. While Curtis is bagging quite a few items to sell, the decluttering process is yet to begin. But thankfully, cleaning guru Joanna has arrived to help Pat decide what to keep and what to chuck out. Why has the conservatory got like this? Well, I haven't really got around to dealing with it. I just need someone to organise me, give me a kick up the rear end and say, right, keep, sell, throw away. Joanna has a plan to do just that. What we'll do is with the small things, we'll put them in the box. OK. This will then enable us to see the larger things. Mm -hmm. What you can do with the larger things is take your time and decide what best way is to get... To get rid of yeah. them. Yeah, let's start. Answer machine. Yes. That's got to go. Just keep packing, just keep packing. Did you? Oh, that woke me up anyway. <laughs> Fido. How much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> How much is that? Worth doggy? none. Not exactly pretty. I do quite like him. Yeah, no. You can see we've created a space. Yes. We can see all the big stuff. Lovely. It's down to you now to decide what you want to do with it. Not a problem. Good one. Thank you. So you have a sit Should down. Be. I think I Get might. Your legs up. Yeah, see you later. 
While Joanna still has the music room to tackle, Curtis has finished gathering up a host of Pat's treasures to sell. How many other things can you say probably get a good chunk of your money back? I'm having a really good day. He's got all these really lovely guitars, but for him, it's just about clearing the space and he's happy to do it. How about you? He is an absolute delight to work with. I've got to do the difficult bit now. You need to put your money where your mouth is. I've got to sell them. Yes. Go on, then. Have fun. You See you too. later. Bye-bye. So while Joanna stays behind to help Pat declutter that music room, Curtis heads to the auction to put Pat's favourite guitar, the Eric Clapton one, up for sale. Good news is, one of these auctioneers is a guitar specialist, so there's a fair chance he's going to phone a friend. Let's see how we get on. Pat did want £1,100 for it, but he's decided to lower his sights and has put on a reserve of £750. We have the Eric Clapton Fender a Stratocaster guitar. There it is. We go straight in on the internet there at £500. At £500, I'm looking for £550 now. £550 I've got in the room. At £600 now. At £600. £650 back in. At £650. Looking good. £700 now. At £700, he puts his head down. Uh-oh. Very, very cheap guitar. At £700, I'm looking for £750. I'll take £720 then. At £700, have you all done? At £700, have you all finished? £700 it is. Oh, dear. Pat's guitar is unsold for now. Well, it was worth putting it into a general auction. Now, I think we're going to have to take it to a specialist and see if we can get the reserve he wants. Oh, still to come. Joanna gets stuck into Pat's music room. What do you think? What do I think, Pat? And Curtis takes Tony's treasured toys to auction. I'm looking for 50 this time. 100. That'll do. In Sutton Coalfield, cleaning expert Joanna is helping musician Pat declutter his conservatory. I just need someone to organise me. But he's still yet to tackle his music room. While back in Birmingham, Tony's in the midst of decluttering his home of memorabilia. He's continuing the gargantuan task of boxing up the rest of the toys into themes ready to sell on. But he has a willing helper in fiance Anne. Rather a lot of stuff to get cleared in here. Oh, do we have to? Yes, you really do. <laughs> now, we need somewhere to wrap all of that Disney stuff. Oh, OK. And I'm thinking Don't it would be a lot more comfortable if we were sat down and had this table. I concur. We need a big, big box, because there's a lot of Lord of the Rings. Uh, we've taken heed of Joanna and Curtis's advice. What we've done is to start sorting through the memorabilia and clutter and putting it into different lots. Therefore, it would be much easier to sell. Come on, then, Pikachu. All right, box is emptied. That's got a limited edition Haldar. Actually, How somewhere. amazing! Oh, and another Pikachu. One of the great things is that Tony will pull something out and I'm like, what is that? OK, that's just disturbing. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to take it out. Who does it remind you of? Chucky? <laughs> <laughs> Paul McCartney will oh, be so insulted. <laughs> We just start each other off, so it has been a ball that I've just been like, oh, look, another console. Look, to go with the other five we already have. Are you sure you're happy to part with this? This has got to go. But actually going through it, putting it into boxes, sorting through it, has to be, frank, quite a task. That's it. You go in there. Anne and Tony have divided all the lower-value toys into themed boxes and bags and now a way to visit from a specialist toy auctioneer who will tell them what they could be worth. <laughs> In Sutton Coalfield at Pat's house, Joanna's wondering if she's walked through the looking glass, but no, it's his music room. There's a mixture of books, flowers, some of his music, photos that he can't get to, Oh, Pat! Whoopsie! It's even got an unwrapped Christmas present. Time for Joanna to appropriate Pat. She wants to clear his shelves. What do you think? What do I think, Pat? Things are not being stored correctly. Well, isn't that why you're here? Yes, it is. 
This time, Joanna wants to pull everything out and only put back what Pat definitely wants to keep. We'll have a to keep box and a get rid box. box. OK. Happy with that? Yeah, that's good. Once we've filled the boxes, we'd organise the shelving correctly. Right, now these are boxes for yeah. cameras that I've got. So when we find the cameras, they can go in the boxes, they can go. I'm surprised at the quick decisions you're making here, Pat. If we didn't make quick decisions, they'd still be here in two years' time. That's what so I try and that. tell people. Right. Quick decisions are the best. Good work, you two. Keep going. In Birmingham, Anne and Tony have finished boxing everything up into themes. Now, specialist toy auctioneer Daryl has come to collect anything of value for the sale room. Right, yes, do come on in, come Thank on you. in. You'll find all the materials in here that you wish to see. Oh, my goodness. I know, there's a lot, isn't there? OK, we've got all the rings, Star Wars, and Furbies. A big, big Luffy, bag of Furbies. And there's 40, some more up there. 50 Furbies. Uh, at least. There's a lot, but are they worth anything? 1998 Toy of the Year. They're probably two hundred pounds worth there. Crikey. Very okay. nice. You just noted you've got quite a few meerkats in the corner. Set of meerkats, about 100 to 200 pounds. Blimey. I can see lots of Lord of the Rings items here. We actually sold a big collection of Lord of the Rings not so long ago and went for about 2,000. Blimey. Blimey, right enough. Collectors will pay huge sums for the rarer toys, particularly if they're still in their boxes, unopened and in mint condition. And certain franchises are particularly popular with fans, such as Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. Probably 80 to £100 pounds there. Oh, crikey. Unopened mint, but there you've got 60 to £80 pounds there. Oh, wow, well, crikey. £200 pounds for a set of those. Crikey, OK. It fills up. It certainly does. With virtually everything capable of making some money, Daryl ends up taking an incredible two and a half tonnes of items away, ready for the auction a few days later. Oh, well, that's okay. it. Thank you very Thank much, Daryl. Take care. Safe touch. journey. Daryl's taking bids from the internet. As he planned, Curtis is putting some of the vintage pieces through individually. He's keen to get a good price for two of Tony's more specialist lots. Some Alice in Wonderland characters and those Nightmare Before Christmas figurines. Anne and Tony's Nightmare Before Christmas collection's coming up now. I think they've got high hopes for this. Uh, we have seven Walt Disney classics, Nightmare Before Christmas characters, etc. Got it, 100 quid. So I'm looking for 50 this time. 100. That'll do. Say 120 now, 120, 120, 130, 140. 150, 160, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200, and 10. 220. At 220, I'm looking for 230 now. At 220, and I'm selling at 220 pounds. Yours, sir, at 220 pounds. Thank you very much. It's excellent news. And here comes the Alice in Wonderland collection. 150 straight in. At 150, at 150, 150, 160, I've got in the room at 190, 190, 190, I've got at 190, 200, 200 now. At 200 now, I'm looking... 210. 210, I've got in the room. At 210, I'm looking for 220 now. At 220, at 220, at 220 now. 220 and I sell. At 220, have you all done? You've got it at 220. See, that's nice. It gets better and better for Alan Tony. Alice in Wonderland, £200 reserve, £220 we've got. Isn't that great news? And it all goes towards this fabulous wedding. And there's plenty more of Tony's huge job lot of toys to go under the hammer. Hopefully making all the hard work of clearing the house worthwhile. The process of decluttering has been emotional. There have been some good times and some bad times. But now we're out the other side. It's been a really positive experience. The pair just has a few tweaks to make. Here comes Joanna to see what they've done and to deliver them the news of how much they've raised from their sales. Anne, Tony, how are hi, you both? Lovely to see you again. Lovely to see you. Boxes. Well, you inspired us. OK. So this is stuff going with us when we move. Great. Come and have a look. Ladies Thank first. Thank you, Tony. Two months ago, Tony and Anne were buried under a wondrous mountain of memorabilia. 
The living room was so full of toys and games, there was barely room to swing a hobbit. But now the entire room's been cleared and cleaned. And look, a proper living room where Anne and Tony can actually sit down. Guys, this is amazing. It is, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Where's the boxes? They've all gone. Everything's gone. You've got a settee. Yeah. A table. And a living room. <laughs> How do you both feel about it? Well, we're thrilled, to be honest. I mean, the house seems to be so much brighter, and it's just lovely, to be honest. It's a triumph for Tony, who understandably found the whole process of decluttering so difficult. Do you miss any of your Disney characters? No. Lord of the Rings? No. Anything? No. I'm pleased they've all gone, to be honest. Please you should be thrilled, gone. because I am. I'm so happy that yeah. you've decluttered a room. Well, well, we've decluttered a house. It's a similar tale next door in the dining room. Before the table was so chocker with figurines, Tony and Anne only had room to perch on the end. Now there's space to sit down and enjoy a meal together. A dining table. A dining table. You couldn't see it before, it was covered in Disney. It was a Disney homage. It was indeed, as well as all the boxes around it. We couldn't move in here. You've got space, you yeah. can sit. And I can see a beautiful garden, the sun shining, and yet another empty room. Another empty room, come through to the breakfast room. The breakfast room. You two have both done a sterling job. Upstairs in Tony's study, on the surface, it looks like there's still clutter to be sorted, but these are all belongings they are going to pack and take away when they move. The pair has made a monumental effort, moving out two and a half tons of Tony's collections so they can move forward with their lives together. So tell me, how are the plans coming on for the wedding? Yeah, we're doing quite well. We've got a venue, we've got a date, uh, so the church is booked. How exciting. Speaking of good news, I have some other good news for you. It's about how much cash was raised Yay. for yeah, the sale the of wedding. your items. Yes, towards yeah. the wedding. Absolutely, yeah. It was a fantastic amount. Awesome. It was seven thousand one hundred and fifteen pounds. Wow, amazing. that's good news, isn't it? That is amazing. They were very amazing. pleased. That's brilliant. Over the moon. Tony's house is not only gleaming and ready to sell, but also the couple have a fantastic cash for clutter total. Thanks in part to those Furbies, which made £230, a pile of vintage computer consoles and games, which went for nearly £250, and those boxes of Star Wars models fetched an astonishing £400, even after auction commissions and fees. Will the money go towards just the wedding, or do you have any other plans? Well, no. I mean, we've had decided already to give some of my daughter some of the money's um, raised, but the wedding oh. will take up the rest. Listen, yeah. it's been a pleasure working with the two oh, of you. Brilliant. And thank you. thank you for having Curtis and I in your home to yeah. declutter. No, that's great. Thank you. You've also got the house ready to sell to earn some more cash. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Moving forward. For Onwards and upwards. What a transformation to Tony's house. He and Anne have done so well decluttering. I do hope things work out well for them and they live happily ever after in their new home. Finally, this loved up couple can enjoy some well-earned time together, preparing for their fairy tale wedding. Still to come, Pat puts his pal Kevin to work. That comes out, take the wire out. And Pat finds out how well Curtis has done for him. It's not a bad start, is yeah, it? That's right. In Sutton Coalfield, professional cleaner Joanna has been helping musician Pat clear his home of old clutter. I do quite like him. Yeah, no. Now they're in Pat's music room. Joanna's plan is to clear his cluttered shelves and find out if any of his old music gear can get the heave ho. This is the portable recording studio. We're going to get rid. Get rid. Yep, 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 yep. Can, but can yep. you see we're getting structure in these shelves already? Yeah, I'm impressed. And before long... One, two, three clear spaces in no time at all. Result. Yeah! <laughs> I'm really, really proud of what we've done today. Yeah. Ooh, Pat, you're a quick learner. Well, what you can do is arrange this on the floor onto the empty shelf. OK. You confident? I think I can cope with that adequately, yeah. Confident you can do it? I'm confident I can do it. 
Pat is doing a grand job in the music room. I've started with him. We've already filled two boxes of things to get rid of. I'm hoping that he sticks to my advice and he keeps clearing that room. Here's hoping, because there's still a long way to go. So while Pat wants to hang on to some things for sentimental reasons... I can't get rid of that. Why is that? It's my daughter's. He's decided to clear some old gigging equipment, cameras, once he finds them, and a couple of turntables, all heading for general auction or charity. They can go in the boxes. They can go. Time for Joanna to leave him to it. In the southeast, Curtis is hoping to make Pat a few quid. He's at an antique centre with those rather unfashionable crystal decanters and dealer Jim. Cut glass. Cut glass. It's one guy and he wants to get rid of the lot. Now, I did say to him, people aren't buying this stuff like they used to. People have uh, been giving it wedding presents. It goes in the cupboard. It never gets used. Uh, Second-hand value is very low. He's got no expectations, which is great. If you wanted a job lot offer... Gonna have to, cos I don't want to take it away. It would be £30. Gulp. 30 quid's a little bit on the low side for me. I'd, I'd, I'd go to 40 maximum. Yeah? Yeah. OK, 40 quid it is, then. Yep, done. Job Deal. done. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Right, I'd better take some money off you, then. OK. Let's get your money out of your pocket. Ka-ching! For something Pat paid nothing for, that's 40 smackers of pure profit. Nice to do business with you, as Thank always, you. sir. Thank you. At home, Pat's caught the decluttering bug in the conservatory. No idea. Useful. Probably go. Yeah, you know what? That was easy, wasn't it? My daughter's rollerblades, she's not used those since she was 14. She's now 31. And I doubt if she'll ever use them again, so they can go. The garden has been transformed into a clutter organisation centre. Where's the keep thing? Keep. Sell. Charity. Keep. Keep. Oh, well, sort of. But within a couple of hours, he can actually see the floor. Okay, I think we're getting there now, you know. Gosh, I'm quite pleased with this. The accumulation of ten years of house moves. I think we're done. Um, there's still the music room to do, remember? While Pat gets on, Curtis has sniffed out someone who he hopes will buy the vintage computer gear, and he's giving him a call. Oh, Tom, it's Curtis Dowling here. I've got a list of uh, bits and pieces that I sent you, the Atari computer, the Sinclair ZX, the, the Dragon. What what are you thinking off the top of your head? I was kind of looking at about the £70 mark. There's Amstrad gaming cassettes and Sinclair Spectrum gaming cassettes as well with them. So, and there's quite a lot of those. Um, so, if we could sort of verbally shake hands at sort of £65. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Smashing. All right, thanks ever so much for your time. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers now. Bye-bye. £65. Now, that's not bad. Nice work. Back home, Pat's tackling the music room, with the help of pal Kevin. Right, see so what you think. Where's all the gear gone? Well, all the gear's there. Well, not what's just... left. Filed it. No, but it was rammed last time. No, but it was rammed. So what we're going to do now is box it up. OK. Joanna said do the small stuff first. Kevin's uh, a good friend of mine, and Kevin helps me out uh, with a number of things um, in, in my life, particularly in my musical gigs. He comes along and he is my roadie, so he, he's used to carrying stuff around. Watch out, Kevin. Pat's feeling very determined. That comes out. Take the wire out. Take the wire out. Right. That comes out. Great. Will you get anything else in there? No. OK. So where's this going now, Pat? Just put it out of the way. Stick it by the door, that's it. Who bossed me around? Him. <laughs> but I don't want to be bossed. And he is a retired school teacher. That makes a difference. OK, if you just shove it out there by the door, that'd be brilliant. Pat, have you managed to collect all this 
amazing gear. Well, I buy stuff on a whim that, that I use, mm. you know, and then a few months later or a few years later, something more up to date comes on the market and I just up, up, update it. But I don't get rid of the old stuff. That's my mistake. Well, you've got enough here for three orcas. Never mind, <laughs> never mind you. I'm working on it. I can't believe what he's got. Well, that was my friend for 30 years this year. I haven't seen anywhere near a quarter of that stuff. And there's still more. Got loads of the old eight tracks. OK. The stuff that I was doing in the 60s and 70s. Really? DJing, yeah. All right. Well, if you want this, let's see if we can sort you out at a decent price. Maybe your fee for helping me today can be having that. Wow, Pat, your generosity knows no bounds. I think today has gone really well, especially in the music room. I didn't want to start there. It was just too much. But after today, with help from Kevin, it's gone really, really well. It's left me motivated to get into the other rooms and give them a real blitz as well. Yes, you both deserve a medal today. It's been a huge effort, but between them, Pat and Kevin managed to load the van with a mixture of items destined for charity, recycling and general auction. Top notch. Good work. For the next few weeks, Pat carries on the good work, clearing his hoard and some. I've been feeling exhausted because the Decluttered Day kicked off a whole tr train of events. And we've decluttered not just the two places that uh, we set out to do, but we've decluttered a shed, half the garage, I think half the street. Pat just has a few little finishing touches to make as Curtis is on his way to see how the clear out has gone and to deliver some news on how much money he's managed to raise. Curtis, how are you? Nice to see you again. Oh, Come and see what we've done. Marvellous, thank you very much. Three months ago, Pat was living in a home so full of old cast offs that some rooms were completely unusable. The conservatory was chocker with old equipment from ex-businesses and piles of clutter that were never used. But now, the room is tidy and orderly and can be used to sit in to enjoy that lovely garden. Now that's better, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. It's such a big space. It's marvellous, yeah. You forget, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Come to the music room. I will, great. Well, if it's as good as this, Pat's made a monumental effort, and it's a similar story upstairs. Before, his music room was so cluttered it was difficult to see the floor and the shelves were overflowing. Now, Pat's music gear has been stripped right down so he can use it, and although the shelves are still busy, they're organised so he knows where everything is. Blimey, it was stacked, wasn't it? It was, it was hardly room to move, yeah. Are you happy walking in here now? Oh, yeah, yes. I feel as though I actually want to come in and do something now. And you got all your trophies up? Uh, yes, my American football stuff. I suppose we'd better go and talk about money, hadn't we? Oh, that would be nice. Pat's made a huge effort, making seven trips to the tip and emptying his home of a full van load of clutter. Before I start, there's a few things I'm still waiting to sell. OK. But I'm very confident that we will get rid of them. Excellent. Got two of the guitars left, they're the good ones. The good ones, yeah. We've got a lead on them. OK. So there's no reason why they're not going to go too. So far, we're just shy of £1,000. OK, that'd be nice. It's not a bad start, is yeah, it? That's right. Three guitars sold, three to the lesser guitars. Yeah. The decanters that were in here, they're gone. Oh, wow, that's good. The computer stuff, yeah. that's gone. Great. Pat's cluttered house has been transformed into a comfortable and orderly home, which he and his wife can enjoy. And also, they have a chunky cash for clutter total. And after those good guitars were eventually sold, Pat's grand total rises to £2,443.06 before commission and fees. What are you going to do with it, just out of interest? We're going to uh, spend it on holiday. Where are you off? We're off to America. So the money actually is going to come in handy because oh, yeah. you don't need to put your hand in your own pocket. Exactly. And someone saved Fido. Hasn't Pat done a brilliant job? It's clean and it's tidy, and for the first time in nine years, it's become another room in the house they can use. Delighted for him. 
And Pat can also get creative in his music room. Best friend Kevin has come to help celebrate. It's opened him up. I just think he's um, happier within himself. And it shows. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.